think another thing that you've talked about uh, being something important for you in in being able to take on the roles of uh, like Kermit or even uh, Beaker yeah. was going into the heads of the performers who originated them. And you've said how much it was important that you um, like really knew them and, and yeah. can sort of channel them. That had to be a really difficult thing as you and the company were grieving Jim yeah. and Richard. Like that must have been, can you talk about that experience of sure. at the same time that you're reconciling with their death, that you're also really needing to rediscover them so you could keep their characters alive. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can imagine, you know, if, yeah. if, you, if you got up tomorrow and one of you guys was suddenly out of the picture, you're close friends and you've worked together, uh, it would be a, a real stunning thing to deal with. Um, and then there was Jim who was, this is Jim Henson, you know, um, and I had worked with him for about a dozen years. And Richard, obviously, Richard passed away in 1992, so it wasn't that much longer after that that we lost Richard. Um, I can categorically say that it would not have been possible to carry on Kermit to whatever extent I was able to keep it faithful without having known Jim um, and worked standing next to him as he performed that character. It, there's just no way. Um, Jim's influence in that character is, it remains vital. Um, and, and it's the only way to get through it. I, if I had not been standing next to him as he was performing Kermit, I would have never been able to distinguish between the parts of Kermit that Jim put into Kermit and where they came from, from within this man that I also knew as a mentor and a friend and a boss and this person, you know, that I spent time with, uh, vital. It, it, there's just, it, it, it goes back to the idea that with characters with the depth of the Muppets can't really be synthesized. You know, they, they are a direct link from the person who performs them. Um, and, in a, and a character like Kermit, who is so core to it all and was so established after 35 or so years that Jim had done him and so associated with Jim as well, um, he had to remain true to his character. If, if it would have been really simple, the simple approach to this would have been for me to say, okay, well, I'm just going to work on a Kermit voice and, uh, you know, do my best on that and just copy everything Jim ever did and watch every, all the I videos. I know everybody. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, yeah. you, you, you watch, yeah. you know, I could have watched everything on YouTube and, and had I not known him, I'd have watched all the YouTube videos. I'd have watched everything he ever did. And I thought, well, he changed over time and I'm going to choose which one I'm going to do. And, but that would have never worked. He would have come a really stale, corporate icon and he would have never been able to grow again and we immediately went into doing something like Christmas Carol you know it was the first big project where I was doing Kermit and suddenly Kermit was Kermit but he was also playing an additional role he was playing a role in a movie as the Captain Smollett same in Treasure Island uh, sorry that was that was Treasure Island he was playing Bob oh, Cratchit yeah. so both of those roles were Kermit playing other characters mm -hmm. so it was Steve playing Kermit playing something else. And for Kermit to, to be able to grow enough into roles where he was playing another character, and yet you still saw traces of Kermit, it really had to be Kermit. And it was a huge challenge. Uh, morning Jim the whole time still, thinking of Jim in every moment, I uh, still do. Uh, I mean, I do it when I'm doing Weldon. You know, it never goes away. Um, but trying to keep his influence broader than just Kermit, but in the work in general and in the Muppets in general. And we might have lost some of that now, you know, the, the, we, we don't have his influence as much involved with the Muppets as we once did. Um, it's not a mom and pop organization anymore, you know, and, and sure. trying to integrate that into a massive company is hard. It's really hard and it was always my goal. Uh, and I think it's not impossible, but it might be impossible now, you know, uh, it's hard to say. Uh, but in terms of taking on Richard's characters, the same story. You know, I didn't know where Beaker came from, from within Richard Hunt. Um, I was around him when he was doing it, and Richard was just doing this goofy thing. So I just, that was more kind of just getting the voice. You know, you think Beaker, is, the, 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 the myth is that Beaker doesn't have any depth. He has enormous depth, you know. My, my, I began to write a backstory for Beaker that Richard never had, which was Beaker is 
a young guy who's very awkward. He can't really speak. He has trouble communicating. So every night he goes home and goes on social media sites because he can type, you mm. know, he can be anybody he wants yeah. to on yeah. the internet, but he, but in person, he's very awkward. You know, he has this kind of terrible job where he goes in every day. He loves Bunsen, but Bunsen kind of inadvertently treats him really badly. You know, he's always getting electrocuted, <laughs> blown up, you know, that's pretty bad, but at least he's got a job. And uh, we, we, <laughs> we tried to touch on that in one of the videos we did called Flowers on the Wall, uh, where you just see Beaker behind the scenes and the poor guy, you know, he's just this poor right. guy. <laughs> 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 yeah, even with uh, Dust in the Wind, I think there was a little bit of that, yeah. too. Yeah. I love those videos. Um, the, the original round of those, I was super involved in producing those. I mean, I, I didn't do credit on that. And we were just working with a fantastic production company in L.A. called Story. Uh, oh, God, my name. Soapbox. Thank you so much. Great. Soapbox. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, they, they were quite new with puppets and puppetry and this kind of stuff. And they were just getting on their feet. So I worked super close with them on those videos, and a lot of them were my concepts and stuff. You know, the, um, you know, the the uh, beaker, the, the beaker in the in the thing singing "Ode to Joy" and all that. Uh, just loving doing those things and really trying to establish them as living being entities in the world. That depth, just Definitely. to me, is everything. <laughs>